All right, this is for third grade ELA. Text set two, three, uh, sharing our world animals. The essential question is why is it important to learn about the animals that share our world? Our goal for today is to infer the author's multiple purposes in telling Lakota's story. So same thing like we did with the um, guinea pigs. We're going to understand why this author wrote this book. You know that wolves travel in packs, and there are wolves who are the bosses of the pack. Did you know they sometimes pick on and bully other wolves? So I, as I read this book, we'll think about wolves, but maybe we'll also think about people. The title is A Friend from Lakota by Jim and Jamie Dutcher. I'll start by reading a little bit about the authors of the book. Not many people can th say they lived with wolves, but for six years in a tented camp deep in the Swaltooth Mountains of Idaho, USA, that's just what we did. We adopted the Swaltooth Park as pups and created 25 acres home in a wild setting with plenty of room for them to roam. The wolves bonded with us, and as practical and scientific as we tried to be, we bonded with them. I'm not going to read all that stuff. So there's just some stuff about the authors. Um... Jim and Jamie Dutcher actually got to know the wolves in this book. Would you like to live with animals in the wild like they did? What kinds of animals would you hope to learn by living with the animals? What kinds of an things about wolves are you hoping to learn from the Dutchers in this book? So this is the true story of Lakota, the gentle wolf who braved bullying. This is an important piece of information. It tells us right from the start that this book is non-fiction. <laughs> Spring blooms over the sawtooth mountains of Idaho. Wildflowers splash patches of bright colors across the meadows, and a young wolf pup, Lakota, rolls in the fresh green grass. Lakota spends all day playing. He turns every rock, log, and stick into a toy. His days are simple and fun, but in a wolf's world, things can change quickly. Every day, Lakota also roams the forest and meadows with his brother, Komodos. The two wolves look alike, but their paws and pad, paws pad down different paths. Komodos fiercely, fearlessly explores the forest. Lakota timidly follows. Komodos investigates every noise. Lakota shrinks back from strange sounds. Lakota is shy and gentle. Why brave Komodo shows the promise of a great leader. So what words do the author use to describe Lakota and Komodos? These words are often used to describe people too. So they have um, similarities with personalities with people and, hum and animals. Soon the first snowflakes fall over the mountains, covering the wolves' world in a thick white blanket. Lakota and Komodos grow. Their, their lean legs stretch tall, and their fur coats thicken to keep them warm in the freezing air. As winter melts into spring, three new wolves join the brothers. Now, instead of just two, they are a family of five. They are now a wolf pack. Every member of Lakota's pack has a job to do. Komodos quickly rises to be a strong leader. Amani um, causes trouble, while Moti, Mozi keeps the peace. Suddenly, Komodo like, lifts his head and lets out a long, Oh! The rest of the pack gathers around him and joins in. There howls a chorus echoing in the mountains. By the following winter, Lakota, too, settles into his position in the family. Gen Gentle Lakota never challenges the other wolves. His job is to help everyone play to get along. Easy to do when all the wolves seem to be in a good mood. But one snowy day, as pack members chase one another, something happens. The wolves suddenly heap on top of Lakota. They snarl in his face. Lakota whimpers and drops to the ground as low as he can go. 
waiting timidly for the pile of wolves to retreat. Does this wolf pack remind you of friend groups you know? A lot of times one friend is the leader, another one is a troublemaker, and another one thinks up games for everything, everyone to play. Just a few days later, it happens again and then again. Before long, Lakota is being picked on all the time. One wolf nips at his tail, another jumps on him, another pulls on his fur. Matsy doesn't join the other wolves. He doesn't jump on Lakota. He never pulls on his fur, but he watches. So, Matsy seems to be different from the others in the pack. What do you think he will do? One day, Amini confronts Lakota in full view of the others. He growls deeply, then he charges. Lakota drops to the ground and, trembling, tries to crawl away. But all of a sudden, in a whirl of fur, Matsy jumps between Amini and Lakota, letting out a loud snarl. Amini skids to a stop and backs off. There will be no picking on Lakota today. So what did Matsy just do? Did Matsy do what you predicted? What can you tell about the two wolves from these photos? So what can you tell? Soon Matsy and Lakota become the best of friends. In summer they play tag and roll in the long grass. In fall they race through the aspen leaves they f that float down from the trees. In winter they pounce on a stream's newly formed ice to hear it pop and crack under their feet. The other wolves don't bother Lakota when he is with Matsy. Matsy won't, f won't allow it. Sometimes Matty and Lakota wander off away from the others with just his friend. Lakota can finally run, jump, and chase like all wolves do. Lakota jumps on Matsy back, his tail happily wagging back and forth. He whinnies, whines that Matsy's inviting him to play, and Matsy always plays back. He seems to know this is what his friend needs. So they're really good friends. As Lakota grows older and new pups join the pack, his confidence seems to soar. In time, the other wolves leave him alone. They stop picking on him. Lakota and Matsy stay best friends. Still, Lakota never seems to forget his past. He was once at the bottom of the pile, but there was the friendship that Matsy gave him when no one else would. Sometimes the other wolves pick on the young ones, but Lakota never does. So this is Lakota's home and where wolves live in North America. So in nonfiction text, there's usually maps that go along with this, and it will have, there's usually questions that follow. So we can see North America. So Soil Tooth Mountains, Lakota's home is over here. And then the gr orange is where all the wolves live. Okay? So all about Lakota and gray wolves. Wolves are social mammals like humans. They live in family groups known as packs. Wolf pack. Pups drink milk from their mothers. Dogs descended from wolves between 12,000 and 30,000 years ago. Dogs and wolves communicate similarly. Both wag their tails, growl, yip, and howl. Wolves are carnivores or meat eaters. Some of their favorite foods are deer, bison, elk, and moose. But they'll also eat smaller animals if their preferred prey is hard to find. A wolf can eat up to 20 pounds of food in one sitting. Gray wolves live in Alaska, USA, Canada, and parts of Europe. They were nearly hunted of extinction in, post, in most of the United States and Europe, and some places such as Yellowstone National Park in the United States. Wolves have been reintroduced successfully, but all wolves today still face many threats to their survival. Wolves vary in size, usually depending on where they live and what they hunt. Wolves in northern Northern regions like Lakota and his pack in Idaho, USA, are typically larger because they feed on big animals, such as elk and deer. Wolves in southern locations, such as Arizona, USA, hunt deer and rabbits and can be a little smaller. Females usually weigh 60 to 75 pounds. Males are larger and weigh up to 130 pounds. So, fun fact, Lakota is a Native American word. In the Lakota Sioux language, it means friends or allies. So in nonfiction text, you will also have facts, too. And, and this page just gives us a, a lot of facts about that. Um, so it also has a note from the author. 
And then it gives us want to learn more about wolves. These are some websites, books, and places to see wolves. And then some credits. Now it also has some pictures with captions. You will also find that in nonfiction text as well. So why do you think the author included these two sections? Why do you think they did that? Okay, so in nonfiction books, you're going to have real live pictures of, of things. Okay, these are real live pictures of uh, wolves. Okay, and then here, these are pronunciations. If you don't know how to pronunciate, pr pronounce com komodos, we can go over here and it will break the word apart for us to help us um, figure out how to say these words. This is another text feature that nonfiction books have. Okay. So what is the author's purpose for writing this book? 